So, you're just getting into photography, and all of a sudden, you're met with a deluge of different types of cameras, and you're like, what the heck are all these different types of cameras? I don't get it. What is the difference between a DSLR and a mirrorless camera? And which one's better, and what are the pros and cons of them? Well, in this video, I want to help expand your photonary on the terms and conditions of cameras, and the three main types of cameras, and condense it all down into that three main types of cameras. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Now you might be asking, what the heck is a photonary? I've never heard that word before. I've heard of a dictionary or pictionary, but not photonary. Well, photonary is the term I created for everything that's in here. This is your photonary. Every photographer has a set of terms, codes, numbers, and definitions that they use surrounding cameras so that they know what they do. And in order to know what cameras, lenses, and all the jargon in between the photography is, you have to have a good photonary. So that means you have to have good knowledge of all of these things. So expanding your photonary will not only help you understand photography more, but it'll also help you become a better photographer in the long run. Because being able to understand your gear is just as important as being able to understand how to take a picture. So now that you know what I mean by photonary, I'm going to add some definitions to your photonary. And we're going to be talking about mirrorless, DSLRs, and SLR cameras. So first off, we're going to start with mirrorless cameras. And that's pretty much exactly what it is, a camera without a mirror. In fact, your phone is considered a mirrorless camera if it has a phone camera. It's a crappy one, but it's still considered a camera, and it falls under the mirrorless category because it does not have a mirror in it. Now, other mirrorless cameras can include your basic point-and-shoot cameras, like this Nikon Coolpix, or bridge cameras, such as this Canon PowerShot. Now, you might be wondering, what is a bridge camera? What is a point-and-shoot camera? Usually, these are subcategories of the mirrorless category. Now, a point-and-shoot camera is as it sounds. You point it, you press the button, you take a photo. You point it, you press the button, it takes a photo. Easy, simple, foolproof. If you can't use a point-and-shoot camera, what do you, you probably aren't cut out for photography, just saying. Now, point-and-shoot cameras are designed for ease of access, not meant to do anything fancy, just meant to get the picture, snap, 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 not have to fiddle with any buttons, changing your exposure, all that stuff. Nobody wants to do that. They just want easy, snappy picture. Not too high resolution, don't really care about quality, you just want a picture. Now, this is obviously a mirrorless camera. Right behind here is the lens, and then behind that will be the sensor, and there's no mirror in between. As you can see, because of that, it is very thin. So it makes it lightweight, compact, it can even just fit in your pocket. A bridge camera is a little bit more complicated than a point-and-shoot camera. It is a step up from a point-and-shoot. Notice how it's a little bit more bulky than our little Nikon Coolpix point-and-shoot. And now it's because it has a much bigger lens and much better image stabilization, a better focal ratio, all that stuff. And it has more of the functions and buttons that you would find on a DSLR camera. And the reason for that is a bridge camera is the midway between a DSLR and a point-and-shoot. So it has all of your automatic functions that you would find with the point-and-shoot camera, but it also has your manual functions as well as aperture priority and shutter priority, or you have auto if you're still in that mood. But buying one of these, you usually use these to familiarize yourself more with how to take control of the camera, and not have the camera take control of you because learning how to use your camera results in better photographs. And then, last but not least, we have the DSLR, which is what I'm using to film this video. I'm using a Canon T6i. Now, a DSLR or SLR usually are more bulky because they have a mirror and prism mechanism inside of them that takes the light from the lens and bounces it around and puts it through a viewfinder so you can see it. That's why usually people that are looking through their cameras like this are looking through the viewfinder. Now, mirrorless cameras sometimes will have an electric viewfinder, 
so that you can still look through it like that, but it is not as good as an optical viewfinder because the optical viewfinder shows exactly what your camera is seeing without any modifications. Usually on screen, it will show more the brightness details and stuff like that. DSLRs and SLRs are more bulky and usually that is due to the mirror mechanism as well as a bigger battery and more functions, features, and buttons, as well as having hot shoe mounts and plugs on the side for intervalometers and mics like this one does. Now the SLRs are very similar to the DSLRs except it's just a single lens reflex. That means no digital, it just uses film. Now get one of those and you can do film photography with it. However, uh, I prefer DSLRs more than film cameras. I'm not really much of a film person, mainly because it's more easy to store, backup, save, edit, and catalog your photos in a digital format. You have much more control over them than in a film format where things can get damaged, you can lose them. If you overexpose it, if you use a whole roll of film and don't get any good photos, you gotta go buy another roll of film. Whereas if you have an SD card, you can just wipe it, put it back in the camera, start over again. The only thing that film is is that you don't have to rely on the battery as much, so you don't have to worry about having that charged all the time. But most uh, DSLR batteries will last a good several hours to even a day, depending on how you use them. Now, what are the advantages and disadvantages of one compared to the other? Well, of course, DSLRs are big and chunky, and they can take a beating. So if I dropped my t 6 i in the concrete, it probably wouldn't shatter, although it wouldn't do it any good. Whereas if I dropped um, the cool picks, the little point and shoot camera, then would, that thing would be gone. Nope, trash. That happened to one of my um, older uh, point and shoot cameras that I had a Canon. I'm not a Nikon person. My brother was in France in the loo, dropped it on concrete floor, boom, lens mechanism broke, useless, trash, gone. So the thing about DSLRs is they're more robust and sturdy. They usually give you the maximum control over your photos. You get choosing the aperture, the shutter speed, white balance, ISO, all that good stuff. They usually have better sensor sizes so you get higher quality pictures. Interchangeable lenses means that you can do a lot more with just one camera. Whereas if you have a point and shoot or a mirrorless camera that does not have a detachable lens like the bridge camera, you are limited to what this lens can do. It is not coming off. If you want to get something different that maybe has a higher focal length, more than this, this is like 230 millimeters. If you want 300 millimeters, so you have to buy a camera with a 300 millimeter lens or buy a DSLR and then get a 300 millimeter lens or a 70 to 300 millimeter lens or whatever you prefer. So having a DSLR or SLR or mirrorless that has detachable lenses means that you will have more control over what you can do with your camera and not have to buy a new camera every time you want to do something different. So when you talk about SLRs, the only thing is, is that they only use film. So if you want, if you don't want to be paying for processing film and don't want to have that unsafe medium that can possibly get destroyed easily or uh, get lost and you can't copy easily and you have to get developed or paid for it to get developed, then going digital would probably be your best bet. And then talking about the point and shoots and bridges, point and shoot cameras really, they can't do much. They're just for taking photos snippity snappity snap and I couldn't take my point and shoot camera stick it on a tripod set the exposure time for 20 seconds and take a picture of let's say the Orion constellation whereas I could do that with my bridge camera because it has more control over the settings than the point and shoot which is more automatic than my bridge and then with my DSLR I could actually attach to my DSLR to a telescope and take a picture of the Andromeda galaxy which is one step up further from what I could do with the others so Basically, it depends on what you're going to do with the camera that decides the camera you're going to buy or where you are in your knowledge of photography. So if you're just starting out, it's a probably good idea to buy a mirrorless, mirrorless point and shoot camera. Easy. You learn how to maybe frame up photos, take pictures, learn white balance, stuff like that. Maybe explore the settings, the program setting on your camera more because that on point and shoots is the one that gives you the most control over the camera is usually program if it has it. And then the next step up from that would be your bridge cameras, which give you manual settings, aperture priority, um, shutter speed priority. So you can mess around with those and learn how to work with the exposure triangle and get your exposures correct without having the camera do all the work for you. 
you get to learn how to use the camera, not let the camera use you. And then finally, the next step up from that would be your DSLR, SLR, or mirrorless camera that would have a detachable lens. Because usually when you are ready to buy a camera with a detachable lens, that means you are ready to buy a significantly expensive camera and some significantly expensive gear. Because the lenses and the bodies both cost much. But you're going to be spending probably the most on lenses. You are going to buy one body and many lenses. And that is how the manufacturers will make their money. By selling you a cheap body and selling you expensive lenses. But don't worry. There's always options to rent lenses before you buy one. And... Usually you can watch many reviews online to see what the lenses actually do before buying them. So it's not like a blind buy. And also it's a good idea to familiarize yourself with photography jargon related to lenses, which I will be doing another video on that, which there will be a link to in the corner of this video. And you can watch that to learn about what all the writing on lenses means and what you need to know to look for lenses that you want to do a specific job. So with that, that is all the information or photonary information I have for you on camera types. So remember, there are three main camera types, mirrorless, single lens reflex, and digital single lens reflex. So if you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and share. If you have a comment, make sure to leave it in the comment section. I will try to get back to that as soon as possible if I can. This is Jared Frankel signing off. Don't forget. Make sure to stay in focus. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching my very first video on Behind the Glass. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more content or have something you'd like to have covered, just put a comment in the comment section and who knows, that subject or topic may appear in a future video. And if so, I may even give you a shout out for suggesting it. So if you do subscribe, I hope to, uh, you stay with us and get to see the channel grow, which I'm hoping it does. So buckle up because this is the start of a wild ride.